Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. Today we're going to talk about buying a graphing calculator. It's the age-old question, should I buy a graphing calculator? Probably, but maybe not. We'll get into the exact details in a bit, but there's actually a better, more important question to ask first. Should I get a graphing utility? The answer to that is an unqualified yes. Being able to graph easily is so useful for understanding, and it doesn't have to cost you a dime. While graphing calculators can be pricey and they require effort to go out and obtain them, there are lots of free alternatives out there that you can go out and use right this second. Let's look at those first. The first type are free graphing utilities that are on the web. There are lots of free web-based graphing calculators out there. All you have to do is visit the website and you can use it instantly. There's no download or setup required. You just use it right from the website. To find one, just do an internet search for something like online graphing calculator, something similar to that. You'll find a bunch of them immediately. My personal favorite of the crop is called Desmos. You can find it at this website right here. This graphing calculator at that site is really great. It's got a good interface, it's very flexible, and it makes beautiful graphs. I highly recommend it. So check out this one first, and if it's not to your taste, you can look around, but I think you'll be pretty happy using this one. Online graphing calculators are great, but sometimes you want a little more power, or you don't want to be tied to the web all the time, right? You might not always have an internet connection. If so, check out some of these free offline programs that you can use anytime. GeoGebra is our first one. It's a really powerful graphing calculator and also has a bunch of other things that it can do. It's got lots of abilities. It has a little bit of a learning curve, but it's great once you know it. It's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. You can find it here, so it's nice, truly cross-platform. You can use it on pretty much anything you're using for as a computer. Next, we've got Microsoft Mathematics. It's a good graphing calculator with lots of abilities. It's only available on Windows, though, but if you're on a Windows computer, it'll do a really good job for what you're looking for. You can find it by searching for Microsoft Mathematics on an internet search. There is a specific website I could tell you, but there's a chance it'll wind up changing and not that long from now. And it's pretty easy to find if you just do an internet search for it. You type Microsoft Mathematics into a search, and it's going to be pretty much the very top hit will be a download link. So just do that. And finally, a little program called Grapher. If you have a Mac, you already have this installed. It comes automatically with any Macintosh computer, and you can find it in the path Applications, Utilities, Grapher. So if you look in your Applications folder, Folder. Then inside of that is another folder called Utilities, and then inside of that is this application called Grapher, and it's a pretty good graphing program, and it's already on any Macintosh computer, so you can just pop into it and use it instantly. I like it personally, so that's a good one if you've already got a Mac. All right. Of course, you might not want to have to lug around a whole computer every time you want to use your graphing calculator, right? In that case, do you have access to a tablet or a smartphone? If so, there's a bunch of graphing calculator apps out there. Some of them are pretty good, and they all cost at most a few dollars. Some of them are even free. There's too many different options to discuss them all here, but just search your device's application store for something like graphing calculator. Look at the descriptions and reviews and figure out which one suits your needs. Find one that you like, download it, right? It's only going to cost a couple of dollars at worst, so you can get a chance for what it's like. All right. However, while all of the previously mentioned graphing utilities are great, very few teachers will let you use any of those devices in class. They are going to be wonderful for understanding concepts, working on homework, things that you can do when you're at home, but you might want the ability to easily graph during a test. You know, very, very few teachers are going to let you break out a tablet, a smartphone, or a computer in the middle of a class test. So that's pretty much the big reason for why you want a graphing calculator, one of those actual things you can hold in your hands that only does graphing. So that brings us back to our starting question, should I buy a graphing calculator? My answer to that is, Probably. A graphing calculator can be really useful in math and science classes, especially ones that you'll be taking down the road. The only real downside to getting a graphing calculator is that they're rather expensive. It's pretty much just price that I would say is the only reason you shouldn't go out and get one right now. Which leads us to the following way to decide of, should I buy a graphing calculator? If both of these things are true, you plan on continuing in math and or science after the courses that you were taking this year. So you plan on taking more math or science at some point, and money is not particularly tight for you, then you should almost certainly go ahead and purchase a graphing calculator. The investment now will pay off later. It's definitely going to be something that's going to be useful when you make it to those future math and science classes, and you'll find out that you'll be using it in your pre-calculus class. It will be useful right now in your pre-calculus level class, whatever its name may be. 
GDP. And so it will pay off today, but it will also really pay off down the road. If neither of the above are true, don't worry, you'll do just fine without having an actual graphing calculator. If you don't plan on continuing and you don't really want to spend the money, you don't need to buy a graphing calculator. You'll do just fine in this course without having a graphing calculator. If you can easily afford it, but you won't be continuing, eh, it helps a little now. It's not a massive benefit, so it's your choice. If you feel like spending the money, go ahead and get a graphing calculator, but you really don't need one, so it's your choice. Finally, if you do plan to continue, but money is tight, it's not really easy for you to buy something like that, that expensive, keep watching. There's some tips later on to help out with what you can do so you can get that price a little bit more manageable. And if you try it, you can probably find something that will be affordable for you. So don't despair. There's definitely the possibility of being able to get one, even if you think it's kind of expensive to buy a graphing calculator. Now we come to the most difficult question of all. Which graphing calculator is best? Uh, quite simply, there is no answer. There are just too many factors. We've got so many options for what kind of graphing calculator we have. There's speed, flexibility, ease of use, how powerful it is, the teaching support, that is how many people will be able to help you with using it, the price of the thing, and even other stuff. In the end, no one calculator is best in all of these different categories. So what you want to do is you want to start off by doing your research. Look into the various kinds of calculators out there if you're going to go buy a graphing calculator. Go online and look up product comparisons to get a sense for what's out there. You want to have some sense of the various graphing calculators out there. Once you've found a couple that you like, narrow your search. Look up specific reviews and then decide. If you've got someone who's a family friend or there's a teacher who you talk to who's a math teacher, or really any teacher who has anything to do, probably any science teacher and maybe even other teachers would be able to help you, ask them if they have any recommendations for what a good graphing calculator is. Um, they might tell you that they personally like working with that and since you have a good relationship with them, you'll be able to ask them questions and they'll be able to give you a quick guide for how to use it when you first get it. So if you have someone who uses graphing calculators or might do that sort of thing, ask them and see if they've got any recommendations as well. To get started, a simple internet search like graphing calculator reviews or graphing calculator comparisons should be plenty to get the ball rolling and help give you a sense of just what's out there. Of course, if you really don't feel like doing any research and you just want to buy something and be done, I would say just get either a TI-83 or a TI-84. They're also called TI-83 Plus or TI-84 Plus. That's really the model name now, but TI-83, TI-84. They are easy to learn. They're capable of pretty much anything you'll need for a few years. They're not as powerful as some things out on the market, but they'll do be fine for at least a few years. And it's common as dirt. It's that last thing that's most useful, actually. It's because they're so common that you're going to find them useful is because you can rely on other people being able to help you. Pretty much any math teacher, if you come up to them with a TI-83 or TI-84 and you say, how do I get this thing to happen? They'll be able to tell you just like that. If you come to them with a lesser used model, it might take them a while. They might not even be able to figure it out. But if you come to them with TI-83, TI-84, they're going to know how to deal with it. And pretty much anyone who knows graphing calculators will be able to show you what to do on a TI-83 or TI-84. So they have that nice benefit of since so many people involved with doing those sorts of calculations knows how they work, you can ask them and so many people will be able to help you out with them. All that said, personally, I kind of resent these products. Frankly, my problem with them is that they're overpriced. The price has stayed constant for more than a decade, even though newer, faster, more powerful graphing calculators have been released for less money. And if you're curious how this is possible that something so old and the way that it's built has managed to stay at the same price for so long, it's the commonness of these products that's kept the price so high. Since everyone keeps buying them because everyone else is used to them and everybody, all, so many teachers wind up saying, go out and buy a TI-83 or a TI-84, there's no incentive to lower prices because since everyone's buying them, why make it cheaper, right? So no Nobody lowers prices and we've got basic economics, the price just stays up the same all the time. So if you like, you know, either of these calculators will do fine for many years. It's basically if you buy a TI-83 or a TI-84, just know you're paying a little extra for ease of use, right? You're not really buying the best calculator on the market, you're just buying the one that's most popular and that will be the easiest to get help from other people on. Finally, some quick tips for purchasing. When you're buying a graphing calculator, it helps a lot to buy online. Start off by looking at Amazon, but you can also check around in general. Chances are that you'll be able to find one for a pretty good price. You can normally knock 20%, 30% off the price and if you bought it in an actual physical store by just looking online. Also, you might want to consider buying used, right? A graphing calculator, as long as it's in reasonably good working shape, is going to be just fine as a new one. So check out things like eBay, Craigslist, or similar sites, and see if there's any graphing calculator 
calculator is in good shape. Be careful to make sure that it works before you purchase the thing, but you can get a great deal this way. Also, I want to say, if you do buy used and you have to make the purchase in person, make sure you have adult supervision with you to be safe. You don't want to be careful just, just in case, and so you know, make sure you've got an adult with you if you're actually going and meeting someone in person to buy this thing. Finally, before buying anything, ask around. You might have a friend or a relative or know somebody who already has one and just doesn't need it anymore or is willing to loan it to you or give it to you for a really nice price. There's nothing wrong with a really free calculator or just, you know, really inexpensive calculator. So if you have the chance to get one, go ahead, take it up, right? Just ask around before you wind up purchasing one. There's a good chance that you know someone who's looking to not have it anymore. And that's great. All right. In the next lesson, we'll talk about how you actually wind up using a graphing calculator, what the basics behind just using the calculator functions on, and we'll keep working through it later. All right. Bye. We'll see you at educator.com later.